Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ed. Today I want to talk a little bit about evolution, um, specifically the videos and uh, write-ups on Facebook, other social media of people trying to destroy evolution or disprove it or discredit it. A lot of people nowadays, it's pretty sad, are on a um, mission to try and discredit science and scientists. And unfortunately, there's a handful of videos out there claiming they can destroy evolution, which do a very poor job at it. And as someone well-versed in the subject, not, I'm not a biologist or an evolution uh, scientist by any means, but I do understand it. So, today I want to explain a little bit about what is actually needed to destroy evolution. It can be done in an official and credible manner. So let's take a look at what we actually need to do to really destroy evolution. So the first step is to really stop using the same old tired arguments. You know, the ones that people that understand evolution and that are intelligent just laugh at. It makes you seem foolish. Saying things like, well, evolution is just a theory, just shows that you really don't know anything about science or evolution. I mean, the fact is that it's a very beautifully put together theory. Calling something in science a theory is one of the highest things you can, uh, you can have. It includes all the facts, all the truths to explain how all the things in that realm work. I mean, there's uh, the theory of buoyancy from Archimedes. If it wasn't a theory, it wouldn't explain, engineers and scientists wouldn't be able to use it to explain how um, to make submarines work properly, things like that. So it's a theory and that's a great thing. And stop saying things like, well, if evolution were true, why are there still monkeys? That evolution explains exactly why there are monkeys and humans and apes. Evolution means change. It, it's a theory that explains speciation, that the splitting of the species to make all the various forms. That's exactly what the theory of evolution does. It explains all of that. You know, and that there are cousins. We came from a similar ancestor. Asking that question is asking, well, if we're related, why do I still have cousins? It just doesn't make sense and it shows your ignorance once again. The other thing to do is to um, uh, relinquish your ignorance, to educate yourself on the topic before trying to destroy it, before dismissing it altogether. Um, very quick to uh, not want evolution taught in schools, but it needs to be taught in schools. It's an important part of biology, important part of our life. Um, so it's important to learn it in school and fighting against it and dismissing it shows that you don't understand it. So the best thing to do is read books on the subject, take a class, go to school where evolution is taught and learn about the subject. Take away any of the ignorance you have, any of the failed arguments and become well versed in the subject uh, that you're trying to uh, uh, disprove. And once you start learning about evolution, you can also learn more about the scientific method, about all the processes it takes to uh, form a hypothesis, um, to form a theory, scientific theory, uh, learn about uh, evidence and critical thinking, and learn about the other subjects that surround evolution, like anthropology, um, geology, uh, paleontology, genetics, all of these things, because they'll they'll give you uh, give credence to and and make you more well versed in the subject of evolution to be able to form a proper argument against or for it. Another thing to do, which will probably come naturally if you learn about science and about evolution, is to stop dismissing and trying to discredit scientists and engineers. These are people that work in the scientific community, use the scientific method on a daily basis. They know how to use this tool, they're well versed in it, they're well studied in it, they know about logging notes and they're trained in how to interpret data. They know exactly what they're looking at. Most of them are experts. So to be a, a layman and go against 97% of the scientific community is just a foolish act and it shows again how ignorant you are. So don't do that. Give credit where credit is due. So a little insight into how the scientific community actually works. It's very competitive. Anytime a new hypothesis is formed, uh, experiments done, data collected and published in a scientific journal, there's rival scientists and labs from around the world. 
that compete to try and disprove them wrong. It's a very competitive field. But they're rewarded for that. Uh, trying to disprove someone wrong just helps excel knowledge further, um, advances what we know about the universe. So it's all for the uh, uh, seeking the truth and facts about how things work. So there are rewards for proving people wrong and for coming up with new substantiated evidence. Um, Nobel Prize uh, uh, has a cash prize, grants and um, funding for your lab and for your research. So if you want to disprove something wrong, join the scientific community and get out there and get your cash prize. Now when approaching, uh, next step is gonna be gathering the evidence. Uh, but before you do that, approach it with an open mind. If you go in gathering evidence with a presupposition, you don't want to try and make that evidence and the explanation for that evidence fit what you previously thought. Have an open mind and let your mind and your opinions follow the evidence. What the evidence shows is the truth. So let your mind follow the truth, whatever that may be. That's exactly what every scientist does. So once you become educated with the science and you're now joining as a member of the scientific community, you can get out and start gathering the evidence. One of the first places to start would be the fossil records. Uh, there's hundreds of thousands of pieces of evidence that support evolution from the fossil record. So get out there and try to show that it goes the other way. Uh, most fossils are found within the strata in a certain layer that is dated to a certain time period. So we don't find a modern house cat in a long ago time period with dinosaurs because they, uh, animals hadn't evolved to the modern house cat yet. So in that time period, we should not show a modern house cat, just like modern dinosaurs don't exist today. So you won't see them in modern rock layers. So if you go out, find the evidence that shows the fossil of an animal of today with an animal long ago extinct in the same rock layer. Showing that um, kind of uh, uh, doesn't totally disprove but um, paves the way to destroying evolution, showing that modern animals did live long ago with um, animals that were uh, supposedly before its time. So um, get out there, become a paleontologist or work with them and have that evidence substantiated, backed up by um, other evidence uh, um, to support it, um, other fossil records, not just one, and make sure other scientists and other labs can also find the same type of um, fossil uh, record that you're finding and that they back up your data. Another thing to do would be to become a geneticist and uh, start doing uh, research into DNA. RNA and the genetic code um, and relation of different species and different animals. Uh, we have mountains and mount mountains of evidence that show the relationship and correlation to time and um, uh, generations ago of when we were related to other animals and plants even. So we go back a little bit and we could find that I'm related to my cousins. We go back further, we can find I'm related to um, other Caucasian European descendant type people. Go back further, we can find that I'm related to African and Asian uh, humans. Go back further, we can find I'm related to other apes, the other great apes, chimpanzees, orangutans, things like that. Go back further, and it keeps going. We're related to other animals, um, more prehistoric type animals. If you go further back, uh, extinct animals, go further back. Um, we're related to other branches, reptiles, um, uh, fish, and then go even further back and we can find we're related to plants. So become a geneticist and go out and uh, um, look into the DNA sequence, look, in, look into our genetic code and find where that does not happen. Find no correlation, no relation uh, between us and other living things. Find that the uh, generation, the timeline of those events are out of place. Once you have that data, you can present it in a paper to the scientific community other labs will do the same kind of test you did to find that data and they'll be able to either back it up or disprove you. Another thing to do would be to come up with a, an optional explanation, one that is valid with observations and evidence. 
you need to have a high standard of evidence. Simply uh, going by what some guy on Sunday told you, reading out of an ancient book that may or may not even be legit, isn't really evidence. That's the uh, claim. It's not evidence. So if you're going to destroy or disprove a scientific theory, you need to have something else to put in its place to um, explain all of the evidence that you're now finding in the fossil record, in the uh, genetic code. So come up with a new theory, a new explanation of how species separated and how different life forms in their current form uh, came to be. And you have to gather evidence for that and you have to put it together in a way that actually makes sense based off what we observe about nature, about how nature works. It has to coincide with how the natural world actually works and not fantasy. And if you do have um, data and evidence to support, stop mixing up the arguments. Um, trying to destroy evolution by arguing against the Big Bang or cosmology or abiogenesis, how organic material first came to be, um, or about the philosophical um, nature of life. Um, those are all um, things, distractions coming into the argument. They have nothing to do with the actual topic of evolution. So stop throwing that into the mix, gather your evidence, support it, get your Nobel Prize and your million dollar cash prize and the funding for any kind of research you want to do. If you do that, you will change the world. You will be a name to remember in history if you can do that. So if you're that strongly opposed to evolution, get out there, be driven, go to school, become a scientist and get out there, gather your evidence. That would be such a great thing because now we will know more about the world we live in thanks to you. So get out there and do it and we'll all praise you. Not praise like that, but praise you, thank you, because it's a good thing to excel knowledge. We want that. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you tune in for more. Subscribe to my channel, like this, share it. Tell me the, your opinion of uh, what you thought about my video down in the comments below. Thank you guys.